We bring to stage um, uh, Jeff Hunt, which is part of ASM, the American Society of Microbiology. And also we have um, with us Danielle Snowflack, which they together, they're going to tell us some cool facts about agar art. And also um, we are hoping to get um, a live agar art demonstration. So stay with us. It's going to be a very interesting and unique session. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Lady. Hey, Joe. Hey. How you, how are you both today? I guess it's really early for you in uh, in the U.S. Maybe for Jeff, it's not that early for me. I have two kids. <laughs> 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 Great. I mean, we have uh, half an hour to our um, uh, to discuss about um, the uh, Acre Art Competition, about ASM, doing a live demonstration. As I, I saw, as I was uh, hearing, so um, maybe I'll give the stage to you guys, and maybe you can just introduce yourselves and then um, give uh, your presentation or the demonstration. Absolutely. Sure. I first have to say I'm really jealous of your guys seating arrangements there. It looks way more comfortable than where <laughs> I am. So bravo to that. Um, great. So hi, everybody. My name is Jeff Hunt. I uh, manage public outreach for the American Society for Microbiology uh, here in the United States. I'm based in Washington, D.C. And I'll be doing just the introduction, but the main uh, presentation here will be my friend and colleague, Danielle. So Danielle, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Danielle Snowflack. I am the Senior Director of Education at Edvotech. Um, we are a biotech education company that works to bring biotechnology and microbiology into classrooms. Um, you know, we want to make it safe, we want to make it reproducible, and Augur is a great way to bring microbiology into classrooms and into outreach events. So thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here. Cool. So I am just going to start uh, with a couple slides just to talk about sort of Augur arts in general, and then uh, we'll get to Danielle with the demo. So uh, I know Anna talked a little bit about Augur and its use in artwork. Um, so from our perspective, when we talk about Augur arts, we are talking about the practice of essentially drawing microorganisms onto Augur Petri dishes and creating works of art. And this has been going on for centuries, sort of unintentionally. The first sort of recognized auger artist um, has actually been Alexander Fleming, who obviously discovered penicillin, um, but was also sort of a, an artist in his spare time. And he was one who really sort of first popularized this practice of really drawing on auger pieces. And there's a whole history of Fleming and his works um, that you can really dig into. So that was sort of the initial inspiration for uh, what the American Society for Microbiology has run, which is a contest for creating works of auger arts. And this has run since 2015. It is an international contest and we are currently running it right now. Um, but as you can see, we get some really amazing works of arts that people create simply using microbes, different uh, colored microbes, um, differential media and different auger plates um, and I'll include a link uh, at the end of this um, where you can check out all of the entries that we've had over the past uh, couple of years. Um, but this is really a great way for our members and really anybody who's interested in, in this sort of science art interface to express themselves and to sort of showcase sort of that artistic side of science and say, you know, this is scientific, obviously, but this is a way to talk about the work that we do in a way that isn't just a presentation or a slide deck, ironically, that I'm showing in a slide deck. Um, just to give people a sense, this contest is open for people around the world, and we've had submissions from countries around the world. I think we're up to about 150, um, but we'd really like to get that uh, to everybody. So if anybody from, I don't know, Morocco is is watching and wants to submit, you know, we'd love to add a little check mark uh, to our map here of the submissions that we've received over the years. Um, so just some basics, if you're interested in participating in the contest, all that you need to do is create your work of art. Um, we ask for a description of sort of what the artwork is because these are publicly available. We make them available on our website as well as on our social media pages. Um, and then we also ask just for technical information because we want this to be an opportunity for 
future or sort of burgeoning artists to be able to sort of replicate. Um, we're really looking to expand who is involved and not just limit it to those who are microbiology students or researchers, but really anybody who has the interest and the access to the components that you would need. Um, so just to, to point out, we do give uh, cash prizes uh, for the, the winners, and these are selected by a panel of judges who we recruit every year. Um, so we have first, second, and third place prizes, and you're seeing the ones from uh, 2020. Um, we also have a People's Choice Award, which is voted on by our Facebook followers um, where we post on our page. Uh, there's also substantial news coverage of the contest every year. Uh, we get uh, coverage in international publications, National Geographic, uh, Smithsonian Magazine, but from countries really all around the world. Um, just, you know, these are really pretty pictures and people like to look at them and write about them. Um, so if you enter, you have a chance to not only win money, but, you know, fame and glory and all of that great stuff. Um, so our contest uh, just opened up this week, actually, and we'll be running through uh, the end of October. And if you go to asm.org slash augerarts, you can get all of the contest details. Um, but for now, I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to Danielle because you're probably interested in, in how to actually create other arts. All right, let me change. So I am using a uh, virtual broadcaster. So I'm gonna pin myself. So everyone should see me big now um, so that I can do the demo and show you some slides. Um, so like I said, um, you know, we are a biotech education company and a lot of what we try to do is create experiences for students, um, you know, that really let them engage with science and STEAM is a big area that educators are looking to expand in their classrooms. And so we're kind of at the intersection of art, science, medicine and technology is this science art. And so the use of the arts is a way to convey scientific and medical education, uh, medical information is nothing new. And so Jeff mentioned Alexander Fleming. He is a big inspiration to us as well um, at Edvotech. So if we're talking about a K-12 science curriculum, most of the time when you talk about Alexander Fleming, you are talking about um, his development of antibiotics. Um, but he was known to paint with microbes um, that we find in nature that are brightly colored. And here, as we can see here in the slide, um, you know, there was this great um, photo, this great figure taken from a paper. It was actually about an experiment where they were um, analyzing unicorn poop. Um, but I just love this picture because it shows the wide variety of colors that bacteria naturally um, express that we can produce from living cells. Um, but one problem that Fleming did run into in creating these works of art was that many of these microbes preferred to grow in different media or at different speeds or even different temperatures. Um, and there's a quote in an article, it's linked to on the slide. I don't know if we're sharing the slides anywhere afterwards, but it's from this article called Painting with Penicillin, Fleming's Germ Art. Um, and, and what was said was that the paintings were technically very difficult, I'm reading, so the paintings were technically very difficult to make. Fleming had to find microbes with different pigments and then time his inoculation such that the different species all matured at the same time. These, worked, these works existed only as long as it took for one species to grow into the others. When that happened, the lines between, say, a hat and a face were blurred. So too were the lines between art and science. And this is not a shock to me. There is a lot of trial and error and skill um, in, in both science and art. Um, but most educators that we work with don't have the luxury of this time to really do the trial and error. But they want to do auger art because this is really cool for students. Um, and so, so when we went to the drawing board to develop an experiment, um, we talked to our teachers, you know, that's the first step that we take in developing new experiments. Um, and their main concerns were cost, time, and reproducibility. Um, teachers have limited budgets. They want to make sure that the experiments and the exercises that they're doing work. Um, and so they asked for simple solutions, inexpensive media, standard growth conditions, safe for classroom use. So many colorful microbes are not available for use in K-12 classrooms. Um, and so, and a high percentage of success. And they wanted these things to create their agar art. 
And so we decided to work with components that we had on hand that we already used in our experiments, like E. coli, which can produce white colonies, serratia, which give red, micrococcus that give yellow, and they all grow on LB media, but they do grow at different rates and their colors develop at different rates um, in our experience, uh, which was giving us inconsistent results. And so we did go back to the drawing board in developing an experiment. Um, and so we looked at what we had and we wanted to know what other microbes that we had that we were sending to teachers um, that could create color and allow us to paint with bacteria, but also be consistent and easy to use. And the answer came from our transformation experiments, specifically um, the plate that you see here on this slide, <laughs> um, which is our rainbow transformation experiment. And in this case, you're transforming bacteria with plasmids that express chromogenic proteins under the control of a T7 promoter. Um, and so this is great because the bacteria are all the same. It's all E. coli. They're all using the same promoter, which is inducible with IPTG, and they produce bright colors that are visible with the naked eye. And so, and so, and so by transforming multiple colors into the same strain of bacteria, um, we can make multiple colors of bio paint. And so what you see here is some of the colors um, that we can use in our experiments. And this means that all of your bacteria are gonna grow at the same rate on the same media, which is gonna simplify the process of creating bio art. Um, they are gonna, and so, I like to think of this as a gateway to bio art. You know, if you go to the ASM site and you see some of the things that people are creating, you know, they're using many different colors, many different bacteria. Um, you know, these are going to be, uh, you know, four colors. It's a little more simple, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't make fantastic works of art. So this is one that was produced by one of the people in our lab. Um, you know, it's a, a, a wave with the sun, and these are all produced with E. coli expressing chromogenic proteins. And the yellow green color here is actually GFP. It's an overexpression of GFP. And oftentimes um, we can see that as a yellow green color on the plates. And so we can use it both as a fluorescent color and as a visible color. So this is what you want to get to um, actually creating the art. So let me switch over to my hands camera so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we recommend creating biopates from transformed bacteria. Um, while I'm getting my gloves on, you know, safety first. Again, I'm using, um, these are all E. coli, so they are, you know, they're K12 derivatives, so they are safe, but we always want to practice safe science. So gloves, I always tell people, you don't want to eat it, you don't want to drink it, you don't want to rub it in your eyes. Um, but again, you know, these are things that you're, if you're teaching, if you're doing outreach, you're probably already using um, E. coli in some regards in your classroom. And so um, if we are creating the, um, bacteria from pre-transformed colonies, and I do have one plate here, which is just our transformation plate. Let me get to it. Oh, I'm giving away many of my results. Oh, good, I kept them off screen. Okay, so here you can see, here is a plate um, with some of our chromogenic bacteria. Um, and you can see here that we have pink, we have purple and we have blue on this plate. Um, so these are pre-transformed. And if I were to uh, make bio paint from this, what I would do is I would scrape the bacteria off of the plate using a sterile loop. I have um, some disposable ones here. Um, you know, you could use a reusable one if that's what you had. We're going to resuspend at least five colonies in a mill and a half of um, LB media, which has ampicillin and IPTG in it, right? Because we want to make sure that we're not introducing. Uh, another thing our teachers wanted to do was reduce contamination. Um, so these plasmids all have amp res resistance, so our media is amp resistant. So if your students are painting on here for a long time, um, most of the crud that's floating around in your classroom will not get onto the plate and disrupt your results. Um, you're gonna incubate your bio paint at 37 degrees for at least 30 minutes. And then you can use a loop, a toothpick, a paintbrush, um, a micro pipette um, to then take these paint and apply them to the prepared plates. And so in the, um, I'm gonna demonstrate some of the methods um, using our Bacto beads. So one of the things that educators did ask for is that, so the, this scenario is um, using biopaints from bacteria that you may have transformed yourself. Um, we're going to talk about the, the one exciting innovation that we did put into this kit 
um, when we were developing it from our teacher feedback was that not all of our teachers are going to do transformation with their students. Um, this is due to a lack of time, a lack of resources. Um, furthermore, we do work with outreach groups where they might only have a few hours of contact with the students. So um, we decided to create pre-transformed um, freeze-dried bacteria that can easily be reconstituted and used right as bio paint. Now, <clears throat> So these are our Bacto beads. Um, this is an innovation that uh, Edvotech developed for educators. Um, basically, these are non-pathogenic, freeze-dried, pre-transformed E. coli that are easily cultured for use in the classroom. Each of these beads, so let me bring one out for you so that you can see it. So each of these beads is gonna contain microorganisms, buffer, salt, and the nutrient broth um, necessary to sustain them in this freeze-dried state. Um, and you can see here, it's a little pellet. If you're familiar with the ice cream of Dippin' Dots, they're about the same size um, and consistency as that. They all, because they are freeze dried, um, but they are, um, each of them contains, you know, millions of bacteria um, that can, that are pre-transformed with our plasmid. And these are great because they're ready to go when you're ready to do the experiment. Um, you don't have to worry about slants, you don't have to worry about plates, you don't have to worry about doing your transformation one day and then having the cells get kind of cruddy by the time you actually go to do the experiment. Um, and most of these strains, when stored in the refrigerator with desiccant, are good for over a year. And so to prepare the bio paint from Bacto beads, oh, and so here, these are our, these are our pink Bacto beads, um, but we also have purple, uh, we have blue, and we also have GFP, which I don't have here with me today. Um, so if we're going to use this, um, to make our bio paint, uh, what we do is pretty simple. So I have growth medium here that I've already supplemented, uh, with IPTG and LB. Um, if you get the kit from us, it comes with the pre-measured amounts that you would use. Um, and I am just going to take a pipette, um, and I'm going to add two and a half mils to the vial. All right. So I'm doing this at home. So I am using, you know, these um, calibrated pipettes. You know, you probably want to use something a little bit more high tech than this um, to measure. But again, these bio paints are pretty, um, they're pretty forgiving. As long as you get the bacteria in there, you get them resuspended. And then I like to incubate them for 30 minutes to give the chance, the bacteria a chance to kind of get healthy again after being lyophilized. But you can see, you know, they're even pink here, you know, because they were expressing a bit of the protein, um, you know, before they were lyophilized in the first place. Uh, and so basically, you would incubate this for 30 minutes um, and then start your painting. Um, and so I'm going to do a little demonstration here. Um, one thing I like to do is, especially when you're doing this with students, um, you know, some of them might be a little nervous about creating work for the first time. They might not think they're artistic. They might not think they're creative. So this is actually a piece of clip art um, that I printed. I took a Petri plate and drew a circle around it. Um, and so it's nice to give the students an opportunity to draw on paper first in case they're nervous about going right to the plate. Um, you know, they can plan out their artwork ahead of time um kind of get comfortable you know if you want it to you know we have the colors you can even say okay i want to do this blue and i want to do this pink and, and kind of plan out everything ahead of time um this is clip art this is a little bug that i drew up for our international microbe day um so this is the one that i'm going to use um and you know we're going to start painting and this process is pretty, it's, it's fun. I find it relaxing. Every time I do one of these agar art demos, um, my lab, my lab loves it because they get to do some of the painting with the microbes. And it's as difficult or as easy as you wanna make it. So I'm just gonna do one color because I rehydrated the one color. Um, and you can take the loop and just start tracing. Um, and this is as hard as, this is as simple as you can make it, you know, for those who kind of are nervous or apprehensive about getting involved. Um, and again, there's four colors, so you can explore with those colors, see what would happen if you had combinations of those colors. Um, you know, do you get mixes? Do you get individual colonies? Um, so I'm using the loop end, um, you know, these, um, 
my particular disposable loops have the pointing ends too, so that you can easily trace and get a little bit more precision than the loop. Up, oh, I just stuck my finger. Good thing that these bacteria have ampicillin in them because if there are any bugs on my hand, they will likely not grow on this plate. Um, of course, if you're in a classroom, you probably wanna do this next to a flame or something um, just to ensure um, that you are, you know, keeping the updraft to keep any extra stuff off of the plate. Um, another technique that we can demo here is pipette. Um, so I have this figure here. Um, you know, we do include a whole bunch of tips on how to paint with agar. This is all freely available on our website um, under this kit. But, you know, here's an example of the size dots that you can get when you're using pipettes. Um, to make some of your dots. So I got my pipette here um, and I'm gonna make some five microliter dots here to um, put, you know, these little, let's call them plasmids or whatever onto my little critter here. And that is, oh, I have a, I pet there. And that is as difficult as it gets, you know, like if you, this is something that you want to try, you want to start, you know, this is a piece of artwork that's done. Um, I would let this sit here um, until all of the, especially the, the drops until they um, soak into the media. So you probably want to let it sit here for 30 minutes um, before you're going to put it in your incubator, um, let it go overnight. Um, to get the color to start. I actually recommend throwing the plates in the, after the initial overnight incubation, I actually recommend throwing the plates in the refrigerator for about another 24 hours. Um, at that point, I find that it helps the colors get really dark, really vivid, um, and then it will look great for your bio art. And so um, one last thing we found when making our works of art is that the actual um, plates that you're using, the quality of the plates is really important. So each Petri plate contains a solid LB. Um, it is included with the kit. This, had, this has been in my refrigerator, so you can see that it's a little bit, it's got condensation on it and, um, you know, the label got a little messed up. But um, this is a solid LB auger. It's included with the, the kit. Um, you microwave it once it's cooled down. Um, you're going to add the IPTG. You're going to add the LB just like with standard, you know, LB that auger that you would make in the lab. Um, and then I like to let the plates dry on the bench for at least 24 to 36 hours to get really dry, get a lot of the condensation off of the surface of the media uh, and off of the lid. Because if there is any condensation on the plates, your bio art designs are going to kind of smear and, and you don't get as crisp lines. Um, and again, everything that you need with the kit um, is included. Um, you know, Pour the plates, let them sit for at least two, let, after you let them dry for about 36 hours, they can be stored in the refrigerator. Um, and, you know, then they're ready to go when you're ready to go. So after we kind of developed the experiment, um, we, we took this kit um, pre-COVID, we took it to the National Science Teaching Association regional meetings in 2019 to see how well our agar system would work. Um, because, you know, we wanted to test it in teachers' hands before we released it. Um, and we had heard at this meeting that this was something that teachers really wanted to try. And what we found was the experiment was a huge success. Um, so here you can see uh, teachers at the meeting creating their bio art from our Black to Bead bio paints. Now, we actually didn't have an incubator at this meeting. Um, the teachers drew the designs on the plates on a Thursday. And so we found a warm spot in our booth um, and incubated the plates for two days. And so by Saturday, you could see we had really nice results. Um, these are some plates on our True Blue 2, which is our trans illuminator. And you can see the colors and you can see the glowing from the GFP bacteria and it looks really great. Um, and so let me show you some of the um, plates that our lab did. Um, you know, as I said, every time I do this um, workshop, our lab gets to do the results. Um, I have a piece of paper. This is our True Blue 2 trans illuminator. Um, if you were doing um, GFP plates, um, you can use this to image them. Um, I have a little note, True Blue. Oh, wait, this is, yeah. This is like, you can see uh, it's a, 
blue light transilluminator. Uh, you can see it makes up my highlighter glow, but I also had that there to remind me to lift up that paper um, so I can start showing you some of the result from our labs. All right, so it's gonna get really bright for a second. Um, this is one of the works. Um, we have a happy face. Um, here we have a sheep um, and this is in pink. This plate broke um, it got a little dry over the past couple of days, but this is someone, um, it looks like an ocean scene with an umbrella and maybe a beach towel. Um, these were done by some of our lab staff. There might be some interns in there too. This is just a picture of the rainbow transformation plate. Um, you know, I love this because you can see all of the different colors, the green, the, excuse me, the purple, the blue and the pink. Um, it looks a little bit like confetti. Um, we called the initial kit rainbow transformation, but the other candidate was cupcake transformation because it kind of looks like sprinkles. Um, here is a flower, um, a fish tank. This is done with blue and pink. And so you can see, um, you know, it is, um, and here is a little starry night scene. So we have a pink moon and then the colony is all around it in the different colors. And so really you're limited by, you know, what you can paint. Here is a dog that's like pink and purple. So the beads were mixed and you can see that like the way the edges are, the, the bacteria grew in kind of an interesting way, um, you know, that expresses both of the colors. And so these were just done in our lab. Um, you know, we have more examples on our website and also more examples. If you go to our YouTube page, we ran a whole workshop on how to do auger art with your students. And so um, just to kind of wrap up for now, you know, basically incorporating art or design into your microbiology experiments can be as simple or as involved as you would like to make it. And so while I've been demoing this with our EdvoTech resources, these steps are going to be applicable to any transformed bacteria that you would use. So if you had, um, you know, a chromogenic or fluorogenic promoter uh, protein under an expressible promoter, um, you know, give it a try and see how well it works for you. Um, and so basically, um, I've shown you two ways you can do that. Um, one way you can do it with pre-transformed bacteria in the context of bacto beads, um, and the other in context of pre-transformed bacteria that you might do um, yourself. Um, and so with that, um, you know, I think that we can take any questions or if Jeff, there's anything else you wanted to add, Jeff? No, I think, like you said, we're happy to take questions in the couple minutes that we have left in our time slot. So Ben and Eleni, I don't know how those come through necessarily, but let us know if there's a way for, for people to, to get in touch. Are there any questions in the chat or anyone interested in learning more? Or we just answered everything? <laughs> uh, so perfectly. you, I know you said it's open, Jeff. Do you get to see the submissions ahead of time or do you wait until you get them all in before you see what comes in? Um, sometimes I take a sneak peek at what comes in, but usually there are so many that I'm just making sure that everybody's got their you know, name sent right and mm -hmm. everything. Um, what I can do, I don't know how it will show up is, um, I'm just gonna flip over quickly. Uh, so I talked about before that we post all of the finalists um, from our contest on our Facebook page. And I know Eleni is actually gonna show the winners from the FEMS contest coming up in a few minutes. So this is just, to showcase for folks um, from last year's contest, if you go to uh, the ASM uh, Facebook page, American Society for Microbiology, you can see these are all the finalists of people who submitted in 2020. Um, and you know, Danielle's uh, lab team, you know, created those in a few days. I would say that people who are submitting to this contest do a lot, a lot of trial and error to get mm -hmm. their submissions because you can see that. Some are multi-plate like this one, some are multi-colored. Um, they get really intricate. Um, and so it's pretty impressive every year to see what is, is created and sent into us. And I imagine takes a lot of work on uh, the part of the artists themselves. So 
Um, but I, in the, in, the, in the same regard, I would say some of the most you know expressive ones are done with one or two colors. So you know if you if a student you know I, I think planning on paper and then getting it on the plates you know is is really important. There's one though that you've shown before where it's like a volcano and that one is fantastic. Um, it's like it looks like there's scaffolding involved and. Um, you know, multiple different species of microbe um, that come together. And I just think it's really neat. Um, yeah, here, I'll, I'll show the one that Danielle's talking about. <laughs> real quick. Um, this one, right? Yeah, that one is so cool. Yeah, I don't know. How... I think it is. Oh, somebody made that. <laughs> So Danielle, how do you do, how do you get all the different colors in the? Um... Yeah, so basically they are um, chromogenic proteins, so proteins that can produce color um, when expressed, and so they're under a T seven promoter, and so you know it is basically there's no other gene in there; it's just the flore the chromogenic or the um, fluorescent protein. Um, and we just have it expressed under T7 promoter. So when you have it on a plate with IPTG, it turns on the switch and the colors are there. And so that's why, um, again, going back to the original Fleming works um, and others, they use microbes um, that have this endogenous color. Um, and it's tricky to get them all to grow at the same rate in the same time. And so because all of our E. coli, once transformed, are gonna grow at the same rate um, and produce color, um, you know, it, it makes it easy because the only variable is color. Um, so we have our blue bio paint, our pink bio paint, our purple bio paint, um, and a green bio paint. And then you just add the media, you paint them on, and they will express the um, the chromogenic or fluorogenic protein because of the promoter system. So if you are an educator, let's say you're an AP educator um, and you do GFP transformation, you know, it, it's an inducible promoter. You can use this system to teach your AP lessons um, or your IB lessons um, because it is that genetic on and off switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. And I mean, this ties really well with uh, our uh, new education source that we have on the IMD website on making your own acre art from, mm -hmm. um, maybe easy to find um, materials. Yeah. So that is up on our website. So it will be very, very nice to see if uh, some of the guys that are listening uh, now, they can create some nice acre plates and then create art on them using that method. That would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, we obviously make the reagents um, to send to educators who might not have an ultra low freezer or might not have the availability availability to do a transformation. So that's why we want to make it as simple as possible. As long as you have a warm place, um, you can just add the media and grow these cells up in your classroom. Um, but again, if you are, you know, even in a research lab, you know, this can simplify things as well. So I just want to ask some questions about the bio beads. So mm -hmm. are there any colors that you currently can't get uh, out of the system that you're trying to work away towards? Yeah, so basically we are limited by the plasmids we have. And so, um, you know, we are always, we are currently, um, right now, um, you know, the Bacta beads themselves, um, we do have them both pre-transformed and, and untransformed. Um, so our Bacta beads, we have E. coli of various strains, um, that are good uh, for transformation, but we also have serratia, we have micrococcus, we have bacillus, a couple others that we use for experiments. The beads were actually developed to allow educators who don't have an ultra low freezer to be able to do microbiology experiments in their classroom. Um, and then one day we were kind of just messing around and we said, what if we pre-transformed the bacteria and made them into bacto beads as well? And it became another important reagent um, for some of the fermentation experiments that we do. Um, where again, teachers might not be able to transform, but they want to do fermentation um, with their students. And so, um, you know, again, like we are, this is a little, sh sh but you know, we're currently doing some research and development to have additional colors, um, perhaps for next year's kids. So, um, you know, keep an eye on this space. <laughs> so what color do you most want to get uh as part of your palette? What color? I mean, I think that everybody has, I don't think it's one color. I think it's all the colors. Mm. Um, <laughs> so there is a beautiful picture going around for years of like a sunset scene with all these different fluorescent um, 
proteins, you know, you get a, a RFP, a GFP, a YFP, a CFP. And um, I think it's the combination of the colors that are the best for me. Um, I will say that our production staff might not be happy with that because we do make all of these beads in house. Um, and, you know, we might be making a little bit more work for them. Um, but I think in terms of the chromogenic plasmids, I would love if my blue was a little darker. Mm, okay. So we're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> But you do have a nice blue. You just want yes, a particular it, kind it of is, blue. Yeah, it is beautiful. It's like a teal blue. Um, I like imagine a darker blue that you could almost. Well, I don't think there is any um, black chromogenic protein to really get those outlines. Uh, and I think sometimes with the agar, it's nice to go back and have a sharp outline. Okay. Well, you know, this is all good fodder for your re uh, research and development teams to, to dig into. If anyone in the yeah. chat has a color that they want to see, you know, put it there and we'll try and work on it. Nice. Do you have pink? We do have pink. We have a great yeah. pink. Um, we have a pink. My favorite, I'll hold it up to the camera. Um, it's actually in this purple. You can't really yeah, tell okay. when I'm holding it up. It is super vivid. Um, yeah, that is nice. Uh, I like the dog. And it's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, you know, here is a plate that has all of the colors that we are currently expressing. Um, and you can see there's a pink, yeah. there's a purple, there's a blue. Um, and the contrast actually gets better with time. If you leave them in the refrigerator for a couple of days, those bacteria aren't growing, but they are making the proteins and they get darker and darker over time. Wonderful. I think we've got just 15 minutes, right, for you to announce the winners of our microbe art contest. So we'll have to thank you, Danielle, for your wonderful demonstration and nifty mm -hmm. camera skills as well. Because <laughs> um, it's always good to see what you can push Zoom to do and you've managed to get a bird's eye view of you doing two-handed yeah. experiments, which is great. So I have been, um, shall I say, perfecting this system because we do run YouTube workshops for educators. We try to do them monthly um, on our YouTube channel. Um, which is youtube.com backslash Edvotech Inc. And then we actually do one uh, where it's an hour talking about agar art and microbiology. And so check it out. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thank you, of you both. I think uh, we'll move forward to announcing the winners of our own um, microbe art contest. I just want to say uh, thank you both. And if you do want to uh, enter the competition, uh, please do, because it's actually running now, Jeff. So when is the deadline? Um, October 22nd. And the October 22nd. ASM.org backslash auger arts. So more than one month to investigate these nice colors and create a nice piece of auger art. So yeah, please do. Uh, thanks of you both. And we'll move forward to sharing my own presentation. Thank you guys. Bye guys. Thank you.